So good afternoon, and thanks, Ariane, for the uh, switch up immediately. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about a childhood game, and I'm wondering how many of you know the game Cat's Cradle? Anybody played it as a child? Okay, a few people. Well, it's going to be a little, oh, and I see you're already opening your strings. You guys are ahead of me. <clears throat> so uh, Cat's Cradle is actually a childhood string game that the first reference to it appears to be in the 18th century, and uh, yet it there's also research that shows that this game may have existed centuries before and was a way to pass time and play games among children. So you might say, you know, what does this have to do with networking? What I'd like to do today is walk you through a little bit of steps of my career and connect it to the string and share a few lessons with you. So the first lesson is that people bring ideas to life. So the idea of interacting a string and, okay, now it's gonna be a little hard with my uh, clicker here, I guess. Um, but connecting that string and noting that people bring ideas to life. If I start to play a game just by myself, I can only get so far. But once I start to meet other people, which we start to do when we're children, so in my case, going through the University of Michigan as an aerospace engineering major, attending the International Space University in Strasbourg, France, and even joining professional associations like AIAA or the Space Generation Advisory Council, the Future Space Leaders Foundation, and others, these are places where we start to build our networks very early in life, and we never know where those will end up. In fact, this morning I met two uh, other University of Michigan alumni who also worked at OneWeb previously, and you make that full circle as that I'm also a Michigan alum, and I'm partnered with OneWeb at Airbus US Space and Defense in our joint venture in Florida, which is manufacturing satellites for the OneWeb constellation. That's a perfect example of a network and the people coming together to bring things to life. So as we note, with just one person, there's not very much I can do. So this game starts to teach us about collaboration, networks, relationships, maybe conflict management, maybe starting over. So with that, I'll take us to lesson number two. Lesson number two is finding a common language. So a game like Cat's Cradle can maybe be something that it doesn't matter what language you speak or where you live, where you grew up, what values you have, but it's a curiosity. It's a building together and, in, and bringing people into that set of relationships. So when I went to Russia at the end of the Cold War, I worked for a company that was setting up collaborative relationships with the former Soviet Union. In short, we were figuring out how to make enemies into our friends. There was such great respect in the aerospace community with Russia and the United States since the days of the race to the moon. And we had tremendous respect to each other. But what do you do when you go to another country and you've learned to be enemies or uh, uh, challengers throughout your career, how do we bring those ideas to life? The answer was a common language. Math, science, music, sports, string games are all things that it doesn't matter where you're from or what you believe. The rocket equation, in my case, was the bonding language. And that's how I found ways to connect with others who had a great passion for space and for getting off of the globe and going to explore new universes. That's not something you can really make up. But once you have that lesson of the first one of people bringing ideas to life and using your network to connect each other in a common language, you can go far. Those relationships led me to a couple of startups. Kistler Aerospace Corporation, back in the late 90s, was developing a reusable launch vehicle that was privately funded. We raised over $600 million in private capital. This was the first time that that had ever been done in the industry. It was bef well before SpaceX was even born, but we were taking some of those technologies, networks, and relationships from the Cold War and de designing them into something really unique. 
Well, we spent over $800 million, so that didn't exactly work out how we planned as we went through a restructuring through Chapter 11 successfully, which by the way, I've experienced now again as we see in some of the pandemic relationships that have happened when times of challenge. And I went to another company called Air Launch, and this time we were doing a rocket out of the back end of a C-17 Figuring out how to do something different in these worlds took a lot of relationships, took a lot of networks, took a lot of collaboration in trying to do things differently. But sometimes as you're playing a game with others, you kind of get yourself all tied up in knots. And that's what happened when we ran out of money, when the market changed, when those first low Earth orbit telecommunications satellite constellations had some struggles with the market. And you get all confused and you start to think, why am I in this job? What could I do? How is all this going to make a difference? And you find yourself all tangled up. So the third lesson is just remember the basics and come back and ground yourself to something simple, a simple string. You can start over. You can come back to a place, regroup, refresh, and then move on to something new. I'm a really big picture person. I like seeing the art of the possible, and especially seeing things that have never been done before, and a vision that perhaps not everybody sees. Maybe not everybody is on the same page, and they don't exactly see what that future is. And at the same time, it doesn't matter to me how you get there, that you can get there through a straight line, or a squiggly line, or a dashed line, and come up with something really clever. A key part to anything about systems engineering or system of systems, which I learned when I did an academic sabbatical at Stevens Institute of Technology, is that collecting ideas and inviting others to play in a team sport to make something happen is essential. So with that, I invite you to play, and we're going to see if we can do a little cat's cradle game. Can I have some... Uh, Helpers, please, Morgan and Madison, which I didn't know until Madison started, uh, we started organizing this session, and she's wearing a Stevens Institute of Technology sweatshirt. And I think, I didn't know you went to Stevens. And she said, well, but I knew that you had been there. And that was a great connection, an exact example. Uh, you guys can just play, to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but a great example of how networks, even alumni, other people you've met at different parts of your career, how they all come together. Ariane leading out before me, you might say, well, how can you just have that little banter and uh, figure out that it's okay for her to go first and me to go next? We've known each other and developed relationships throughout our career. And today at SGX, much of the purpose, <laughs> are you tied up in knots yes, now? Sir. Okay, that's all right, go back to the string. Uh, but you, you come together in these relationships and what you learn today and spending this week, especially as we are coming out of the pandemic, is an opportunity to interact. Now, if you're comfortable um, with your next door neighbor COVID friend, you are welcome to try this game yourself. Uh, would, you like to, would you like to learn? We, we can do it. It's a little test after, after lunch. So you pull your string like this and then curve it around your palm. Okay, now take your middle fingers and you're going to go through one side and then the other side and you get this little X, two X's. Oh, I already see people figuring it out and who know. So now you take your friend, Here, you're a friend. Okay, you pinch the two outsides and go underneath and the other person drops out, and you have another shape. So your network starts to shape, take different shapes and sizes when you play. And if I now go on top, pull to the outside and underneath, and I end up with a new shape. I can already see some knots back there. The next step in the game, okay, are you really? Uh, Okay, but I think your arms are gonna cross under mine. Okay, there we go. So then you take your pinkies under the two opposite sides, cross again, and go underneath. 
then you kind of sort of <laughs> kind of sort of get it. <laughs> This idea of inclusion and participate. Oh, I need my string back though. I like I like having it. So this idea of inclusion is really something we can use in our everyday in our everyday lives about bringing other voices into the conversation. That spirit of diversity and inclusion was something really important when I was at Ball Aerospace as well. I can see I'm losing the audience, so I'm going to go to our final lesson, which is exactly what you're doing today, is engaging with curiosity. As there's new opportunities and new ideas, bringing people together, I have no idea how these kids did this big string game, but I'm pretty sure we decided we wouldn't demo today of having two people and then four or eight. What if we had this whole room in one big string game and what would that look like? What kind of creativity could we come up with? And that was exactly the theme that drew me to Airbus US Space and Defense last year. In fact, uh, as the Satellite 2020 conference was winding down, I was getting my offer from Airbus and everybody's you know, going off to, uh, to their homes and to quarantine where we would be for pretty much the last 18 months. And what I have here is the collection of networks throughout my career, the collection of lessons, and I'm delighted to bring those all to you to get today. Something fun, something clever, the rainbow of diversity, and taking all the lessons of, uh, of today, of this simple childhood game, and I hope that you enjoy it throughout the week and throughout your careers. Thank you.